Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to a very quick video on ratio, proportion, and exchange rates. Briefly, you'll have seen these before. Ratios can be written as the ratio of A to B, like that. This is also the same as almost writing as a fraction A over B. Note, it's important that A to B is not necessarily the same as B to A. All right. We can have equivalent ratios, and we get to and from equivalent ratios by multiplying. A bit like if you multiply the top and the bottom of a fraction by the same amount, you get to an equivalent ratio. For example, if you have the fraction 1 over 3, and you multiply the top by 2 and the bottom by 2, you get 2 over 6, which is known as equivalent to the initial ratio, or the initial fraction. Similarly here, 12 to 8 is the same as 24 to 16. Or you can divide top and bottom by 4, and say 12 to 8 is the same ratio as 3 to 2. All right. Um, apologies. When ratios are written in terms of the smallest possible whole number, they are expressed in their simplest form. So we are often using ratios of whole numbers. 1 to 1.5, we would not consider a simplest ratio. We would instead multiply both sides by 2 to make it a 2 to 3 ratio. Alright, um, ratios must be expressed in the same unit of measurement. So for example, express 15 centimeters to 3 meters as a ratio in its simplest form. Well, we wouldn't just write 15 to 3. We've got to remember the units are important. 15 centimeters to 3 meters, we convert both into centimeters and then what happens is it makes it unitless and then we can simplify by dividing both sides by the same number. Note that when there's a 1 on the left hand side, it's called a unit ratio. And we use unit ratios quite a lot as 1 to something else. And this is the only example where you'd really see a decimal amount. So rather than, well, we'll come to it in a second, exchange rates, rather than seeing whole numbers with exchange rates, you'll quite often see 1 New Zealand dollar to 0. Point, say, six nine seven USD as an example. That's a unit ratio, meaning one New Zealand dollar will buy you 0.697 US dollars. Alright. If a sum of five hundred dollars were shared among a group of people in the following ratios, how much would each person receive? Now there's a nice way that you can get to work these out. One way is you can simply sort of eyeball it. If it's six to four, well that's sort of you can imagine six parts to one person, four parts to the other person. You can figure out how many parts there are in total. And I like this way of doing it. So in total, there are 10 parts there. 10 parts, well, 50, 500 divided by 10 is $50. Each part, that's one part, is $50. So if this person here is getting six parts, they're getting six times 50, 300. The other person is getting 4 times 50, 200. So that ratio is 300. Sorry, my pen's not doing well today. To 200. All right. Similarly, you can use that with a more complex ratio. Say here, if we wanted to split it, actually, let's go right to the end. 5. 10 to 5 to 4 to 1 in that ratio there, we'll notice there are 20 parts. So we would do 50 divided by 20 is 25. And therefore, the first person would receive 10 parts. Each part is $25, $250. 5 25s, 4 25s, 125. It lets us break up a number into a ratio relatively simply by adding the total number of parts together and then multiplying it back out into different parts. Just one type of example question you might see or use for it. Same thing, okay, exchange rates. You'll almost always see exchange rates expressed like this, one to something. In this particular example, Jamie, who's from the UK, is going on holiday to Florida. The exchange rate is one dollar, sorry, one pound to a dollar seventy. One pound will buy you a dollar seventy. If he wants to change 900 pounds into dollars, what should he do? Now, rather than memorizing a process here, I think it's easier to understand the ratio and then figure out what to do from the ratio. Here, clearly, if you have pounds going to dollars, pound will buy you more than one dollar. So if he's got 900 pounds, 
he should end up with more than 900 US dollars. So what he can do is do 900 multiplied by 0. Point, sorry, 1.7 to get his final amount. And chuck that in the calculator. 900 times 1.7 is 1530. After his exchange, he converts $160 back. Now, if he's going $160 back into pounds, $160, the dollars are weaker, so you would expect to go into pounds, which is stronger, so you expect the amount to drop. The amount to drop, dropping, you're thinking of dividing. So you do the 160. Oh, that is awful. Sorry. 160 divided by $1.70. And then you get the amount it drops back to is 94.12. And you can round that. In, that's attempted at a pound sign. 94.12 pounds. Now note, assumptions to keep in mind for your internal are there are always transaction costs. Whenever you send money overseas, you effectively lose some money. What the company will do is they'll quote you a ratio like this, 1 to 170, and then they say, all right, to change money, we'll charge you $10 and give you that ratio. The other way companies will charge you money or will get money from you is through a ratio gap. So, for example, you might be able to buy dollars at the 170 going over, but they'll never give you the same ratio going back. There's a gap between the ratios, which means the company takes the difference between. Generally, sending a large amount overseas is cheaper per dollar or cheaper per the amount of changing than sending several small amounts because they might charge you per transaction. So it's better to send one big amount rather than several small amounts. It's a bit like when you go to the ATM and it charges you a fee. You should take out a large chunk of money rather than taking out small chunks of money and getting charged the fee each time. All right. So, hope that made some sense. Hope you have notes. Please send in the class. Thank you very much.